how did you start even like dealing with um, living in Redfern? I think you've got to understand, especially in this day and age, for those that don't know what Everly Street Redfern was like, you could not even walk there and taxi drivers wouldn't drive there. Mm. Um, police were there more often than anybody else. And um, there was a lot of struggle and a lot of stress and a lot of destructive behavior. Um, it was normal as part of the community. Uh, and saying all of that, it was a really tight community mm. and uh, a bond that we have you know, as a community held forever. And I'm forever grateful to grow up there because it's always made me grateful from where, where I've grown up. Yeah, where you come from. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the most important things in my life, growing up in that um, neighbourhood. You know, a lot of crime, a lot of drugs, a lot of um, heartache, mm. uh, as I said. And I think the morals and behaviours and beliefs that I formed during those formative years mm. were learnt in that environment mm. and I was a product of that environment. Mm. Uh, my choices weren't the best at that time. Um, and I, obviously, I was more about fitting into that community. Yeah. And I think just growing up that way, that was just a total norm. Mm. But uh, anyone external of Redfern at that point in time understood that Redfern wasn't a place that you wanted to you know, yeah, duck yeah, your yeah. head in, whether it was day or night, especially mm. at night. Mm, yeah, I, I, like if you read back in the history, Redfern was a place they would call the ghetto and they'd throw all the uh, immigrants there from like uh, from Lebanese to Indians to you know all of them they were just thrown in that corner and it's low income inc- low income areas and stuff like that and a lot of aboriginals were there too and within the community you could see that people would get along like where my grandma was in in Pitt Street um a lot of the aboriginal community used to come to her house and just like ask to use the phone or wow. um, or come and eat because you know they just had that connection you know yep. so even though there was a lot of bad there was still like a, a, like a good sense of community there when you walk by you could say hello and stuff like that but a lot of people don't know there's a lot of housing commission there. Absolutely. And and even to this day, it affects um, the youth that are, are, are there today. And they try to throw basketball courts in and stuff like that, to, but it's just not enough, you know? Absolutely. For someone that's gone through all that stuff, you know, there's people, there's young youth out there that are that, that think, oh, you know, you're you're an older gentleman. You're not going to know what we're going through. But yep. you actually do. You've been there Absolutely. when it was rougher, you know? Um, let's go down choosing your friends. Like, yep. how do you, how did you... Because you were telling me before we got on the air how you were different towards all, uh, among all your friends. How were you different and why? I think the biggest thing, growing up in that environment, there was a lot of respect, whether you're Aboriginal or not. Um, and living in that area, a lot of people knew everybody. And we were able to walk down the street and acknowledge one another and respect one another. But if you were from out of there, you were crazy to come into there. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, I think uh, for me... Look, you know, looking back on it, it was insane growing up there. But uh, my friends were those that were headed down the same path. And that path at that point in time for me and that point in time in life was very destructive uh, and I'm definitely not productive, productive uh, in the wrong way. But my choices were what I felt were normal. Yeah. And, and that meant that I just growing up in that environment was taught in a sense that what I was doing wasn't, I think back on it, wasn't wrong. And I just thought I was representing our community. And oh, so when you're in the midst of a, in the middle of the storm, you don't know that you're doing wrong. I just weren't educated enough yeah. and I weren't mature enough yeah. as a kid. Yeah. And by the time I'd got to that point, I'd already had a lot of habits and rituals instilled in myself that were negative and, and you know, non-productive. And that then had an impact on the choices I made and the friends that I kept around myself versus who I'd keep my um, friendships now. In saying that, I still have friends from that area um, that I try and inspire and I hopefully lift up mm. to where I am now um, to ensure that they ha- live a happier life. Happy.